What you heard? What you heard? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. What you heard? What you heard? Huh? Huh? What you heard? You can hear a motherfucking thing. Hey yo, what's up people? It's your boy Tizzle from Pie Talk by Tizzle and uh I want to say, first of all, thanks for all the support and love y'all been giving us, man. You know, we run them numbers up, trying to get up to a thousand subscribers. And uh, we have a real special guest here today, you know. Actress, model, and just doing her thing all the way around. Hair products and everything, man. You know what I'm saying? She got so much shit going on, man. You feel me? And uh, we got our shit going on, man. We all get a chance check out that Polly Talk About Tizzle, Cold 7 merch. But um, now we're going to go ahead and introduce... Jalissa to the stage. <laughs> what's up, what's up? How you doing today, man? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. You as well. You as well, man. So first things first, man. Where were you born and raised at? Well, I'm originally born and raised in Las Vegas, Nevada. Um, I moved to Houston, Texas when I was about 18 years old. Okay. How long you spent out there? I was in Houston for three and a half, almost four years. Okay. Almost like Drake, Houston kind of raised me a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You liked Houston? Everyone I did. Everyone tell me good things about Houston. I did. Houston taught me a lot of values of, like, um, our culture. Okay. I will say. Um, being from Las Vegas, it's dope. Super, yeah. super dope. Um, you get to know a lot of amazing people. Um, there's a lot of different things you can get into in Vegas, but the South really taught me a lot about just culture. Absolutely. In general, especially for a woman. Yeah. And it seems like it's more like... Our people, it's, it's like a lot of black-owned things out there, you know what I mean? And like a lot of camaraderie, like a lot of black people working together and trying to uplift each other. Yeah, Houston, Texas, is. Um, I think it's almost everybody. Though That's the one place where I actually went. And uh, when I was in Houston, you know how people deal with a lot of racism, a lot yeah. of different issues. I never dealt with that. There's actually a thing that they call, um, especially in Houston, that's where I heard it the most, it's called Texas Friendly. Okay. So... Um, I think almost everybody, I had a woman, she was like 64 at the time, I'm like 22, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, she's coming through the door and she sees me getting ready to walk into a store, uh -huh. so she doubles back from like a middle of an aisle, uh -huh. on some like, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense, but just regardless, she doubles back from the middle of an aisle because she's seen me walking in from further past, like, uh -huh. in a little bit on the sidewalk, just to come open the door for me, it's oh, kind of shit. a place where, um. It was a woman. It was a woman. Cause you know, dudes be on that, but they be trying to get a look at the butt, butt shit. You know, just facts. You know what I mean? I dig it. If a dude run up to open the door for you, you gonna buy this motherfucker got something on his mind. I mean, I'm gonna keep it real. No, I think because I did spend that time in the South, some, some men just got it in them. Absolutely. Some don't. I'm some one of them, do. man. I usually try to turn my head because I don't want nobody to think I'm a creep. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, as far as acting and modeling, which one did you fall into first? Um, I fell into modeling. In Houston, Texas, I was a uh, waitress and a bartender at um, Dave & Buster's. Oh, yeah? Uh-huh. It was this lady that worked with me. Her name was Nina. Okay. Super random. Um, she worked with me. She was like, man, I know this girl. Oh, my mm. gosh. She's so cool. She was like, man, you need, to, you need to get into this. She was like, you need to talk to her. I'm like, man, I got to get some money. I'm not worried about that. <laughs> <For real. laughs> so, you know, I'm flipping my tables and everything, bartending, serving. And um, I went. I went to one of their little events. Uh -huh. And uh, it, was actually, it was actually really amazing. It was a... Uh, it was a small little team, and that's something that I'm really interested in. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was a small team. It was a small group of, like, family that kind of worked together, but they were also launching each other off and still working on, like, their social platforms and stuff. So at that time is when I actually developed, like, social media because, well, before that, I didn't have it. I didn't find any importance in it okay. until I started modeling. Okay, okay. And how long how long was you doing that modeling out there in Houston? Um, let's, say two let's say heavy 2013, okay. 2015. Super heavy. Okay. Okay. That's what's up, man. Mm -hmm. As far as with that, like, as far as modeling, was you kind of, like, nervous with, like, dealing with certain photographers? Because, you know, like, worried about someone having a one-track mind or someone just trying to do some crazy, some creep shit? I mean, to keep it a buck, uh, when I started modeling, I was in Houston, Texas, dating uh, my ex-girlfriend. Her name was Lee. Mm -hmm. So, um, everybody knew... I was just as gay as this gay that came. Oh, you feel me? <laughs> so that was like a cheat code. It was like a, yeah, like, so oh, Lee would either, she would either come through to the shoots with me, she would come through to anything that I was doing, but that that's what was known, you know what I mean? So it was either us at events, us at parties, but that was my chick, my chick was mine, we were good, so I never really had that issue. No, I had the issue of the gentlemen that were like, I'm still that nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So all that, all that girl shit sound cute, but I'm still that nigga, right? So I had that, um, 
every here and there, especially with photographers, it was only one yeah. where he was like, listen, I don't give a fuck about none of that. All that uh, girlfriend shit, I don't really care about none of that. You know, you, you are something that I kind of want. Mm-hmm. And um, we actually became friends because I kind of talked to him. I was like, look, man, I said, my dad is really not in the game, but in the game for real. I said, there's mm-hmm. really nothing that, you know, I haven't had from an amazing man. Mm-hmm. I said, so you have some serious standards to live up to. 100. You know what 100. I mean? He's still number one. So it was just like, what? I was like, after, you know, sex and fun, I was like, what's really on your mind? And what's next? And niggas was like, I'm like, that's a, why I'm still with my bitch. What are you talking about now? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, well, hey. It was funny. So how did you get into acting? Um, well, to be honest, um, I've done like some small skits, things like that, where we just kind of having fun online, mm-hmm. um, especially with a couple friends on like YouTube. And then I did some like couple things on TikTok, nothing too crazy. But uh, when I actually got into my show, which is Lip Talk with Lisa, okay. that's when I had to kind of get more into like, I guess, acting, um, not improv, but. It wasn't improv, but it kind of turned into it. So a little yeah. bit type of acting, a little bit type of improv. So that was more so this year where I really got heavy into it. All right. Well, since we're on the subject of Lip Talk by Lisa, where, where did that idea come from? So um, Lip Talk with Lisa, um, I was actually in the kitchen, <laughs> right? Um, being as gay as I was for forever, I have a boyfriend now. Super funny. But um, <laughs> <laughs> I was in the kitchen. So my boyfriend comes down, and he's like, look, man, look. He was like, babe, you've been talking about working with me. I've been talking about working with you. He was like, you know, you're super fun. You're super sexy. Ladies love you. Everything's all dope. He was like, we can kind of come up with this concept of this show where, you know, it kind of involves you, what you want to do, how you want to do it. Um, and it was just kind of, he gave me like a skeleton. Okay. He was like, yeah, man, this, this would be cool if I seen you like this. He was like, let me, let me give you something to look off of. So we actually looked at some things online. Mm-hmm. And he gave me this skeleton of like, babe, you can, you can do this. It'll be great. Okay. So I was like, hmm. Um, His mother works in production in uh, Los Angeles, California. She does a lot in Hollywood. Okay. A lot in Hollywood. So um, he actually kind of gave me the information a little bit. Talked to his mom a little bit about it. Um, And then uh, he kind of planned for her to come out here. He was like, we got to get this show done. He really pushed me. And I was like, you know what? Cool, let's get it done. So when he had his mom come out here, um, I thought the production went a whole different way. Yeah. So I was like, cool, we're going to come out here. Cool, we can finish the show up two, three days. So she comes out here. She's out here for a few days. I'm, I'm doing my thing. I'm kind of lagging. He kind of lets me know. He's like, yo. He's like, she's been out here. What's going on with you? I'm like, no, nah, I mean, I'm trying to get on it when we all get on it. He's like, no, you guys have to kind of sit down there and knock it out. So something that I thought took a week, maybe two, to come up with something. We did this for months. Oh, shit. Months. I had to put some work in. Real work in. And that's when it kind of took off, when it was like a, no, nah, you really need to sit down. And then my first day, we sat down for about six hours. We sat down downstairs in our house. Um, and she broke down to me um, production, casting, um, basically coming up with treatments, uh, just what what will what will sell is what okay. we kind of talked about the most because people can brainstorm and talk about a lot of shit, right? Putting uh, it to motion is something different. Right, putting it to motion is something different. So when you Absolutely. put it to motion, some ideas you think about and you're like, bro, that's not going to fucking nah. work. <laughs> you know that's what I mean? just their idea. Right, right. And then <laughs> yeah. some of them are like, you know what, this is golden. This makes the most sense. So we... Um, we end up kind of sitting down there and really brainstorming. And after day one, where we barely scratched the surface, but I seen what it took to put in, yeah. I was like, yeah, this is about to be a few months. <laughs> yeah, make you have an appreciation for things, man, for mm-hmm. sure. So what did you guys base that show around? Like, what was the, like, topic? What was one of your favorite topics on the show? Um, so we based Lip Talk with Lisa. It's actually a fun and sexy talk show. Okay. Right. That's the most I can give you guys because it's fucking lit. It's oh, it's, it's, it's about to come out. Yeah, Lip Talk with Lisa, um, we were going to start airing it around February. Okay. But I think with the holidays and everything coming up, we want to push it out a little bit further. Uh-huh. I'll have, like, final details on when we're actually going to have it aired. But um, Lip Talk with Lisa is based off of basically covering, like, current events in a fun and sexy environment. Okay. That's the best way to put that. Yeah, that definitely sounds uh, entertaining. So, uh, like, what do you feel is, like, um, do you feel it's harder to break into – modeling or acting in Las Vegas? How do you feel the Vegas scene is compared to the Texas one? All right, so you guys want me to keep it a buck? Yeah. Or... Here's the thing. Um, and I'm not, I'm not here to be controversial. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, but my thing is... Controversial, don't let me mispronounce it, but my thing is the thing about modeling and acting in Las Vegas. So I'm born and raised from Las Vegas, Nevada, right? I have sisters, cousins, moms, uncles, 
family member. I have everybody that grew up in Vegas. And um, Las Vegas is a place where, and it's no disrespect to people that push further. There are people that make Las Vegas different. My father is a man that really, like, knew the city and knew what I was going to be a part of when it came to our city. Yeah. So in Vegas, it's, it, let me say it like this. It's, you can easily get caught up in what mm. you feel like or an opportunity that you think will be profitable, but it tends to be more of an opportunity for others on the for opposite end. Else. Absolutely. Right. So Vegas is a place where sex sells. Let's just keep it a buck. Yeah, for I, sure. I'm going to be open with you. Sex sales, Facts. it's a thing. So when it comes down to, uh, I found out what a 304 was this year. When it comes down to a, a 304, I found out what that was this year. I didn't know there was an actual term for it. So a 304 is a thing, right? That was right now, all the way in pages back in the day. Bro, I didn't, I didn't know what it was, right? So when it comes down to us Vegas women, you know what I mean? I'm from Las Vegas. I can say that yeah. I work a square job. That's actually a thing. My job, being a regular job, is a square job yeah, here in the Bay. Right. So I, I, I work a regular job. I do security and solar panels. I work a square job, right? So the average woman in Vegas, not the average, um, the majority of women that get money, consistently tough mm -hmm. out here. Um, let's say it's the, the 304 women. Let's say it's the women that, um, you know what I mean, dancing, are dancing. You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with a sex worker. I have best friends that are sex workers, so don't yeah. get me twisted. It's the fact of the matter is that when you're breaking into an industry, when you already, and I learned this by really, you know, dealing with a few friends. Mm -hmm. um, I have a few friends that are really, really into the industry. A couple of my friends are like platinum artists. I have a few friends that are really into it. Okay, okay. And when they express to me, like, look, Jaleesa, even your modeling right now, some of the things that you're doing can tend to kind of eh, you this way versus where you want to be. So when you break an industry in here, it's usually a bit more sexual, right? Yeah. It's usually a bit more sexual in whatever way. Either you had a great connection with a, with a manager that maybe you were having relations with or you were doing your thing and you met this awesome photographer who's connected with many people. Y'all did y'all thing. You did a couple photo shoots and now you're in the industry. When you start moving into that more sexual feel it's cool to an extent right yeah. it's okay to an extent but sometimes if you're trying to get into big business yeah you don't get looked at the same because you went more into this field yeah. versus that field so in vegas people come to vegas to party and have fun these rich right. men that come to vegas to book you get you capital. entertainment capital they're out here to get you because they already know what they want from you like it's a different type of time yeah so when you meet a man you present to him your mind and your spirit versus your pussy and your sexuality, mm -hmm. it turns into a different scene for you. And in Vegas, you almost are not top, but it's almost the norm. Like, I'm bad, I'm bomb, I probably had a couple boyfriends, so I should have anything that I want. And it's yeah. not really what reality is. Nah, so, and it's, and it's not all people. I'm, I love Vegas, but it's just some people to where when you're getting into this industry, if you get into it the average way by being a pretty girl, by having a, a cool following, by knowing how to twerk online, by getting, getting, because the majority of women out here with their following, it's men, they, they, they out here, they, they a little bit thirsty, you know what I'm saying, ooh, baby, I like this, ooh, girl, I like that, ooh, that ass look fat, and you have the most followers, there's 30, 40, 50, 60,000 people that are looking at that ass on a consistent basis, you post a picture of your family, you get three likes. Oh, man. So, period. So, it's like, um, when you go into this lane, in modeling and acting, and I, I've kind of crossed a little bit into both because I am from Las Vegas, so I'm completely comfortable with my sexuality. Yeah. But I just do things a little bit different. Okay. I can I can be a sexy model and do boudreau modeling, and and do nude modeling, and it not be, you know what I mean, a fuck show type yeah. of situation. So. So you want to be taken more seriously? Definitely, I do. But I will say, like, let's say I did start here. You know what I mean? Um, who who knows where kind of things would be? If I didn't go to Houston, who knows where I would be? You know what I mean? If I didn't go to a place where not only my father, because he was amazing, so I know where I would be based off of that, but just opportunity, yeah. right? This woman came to me sitting in a bar waiting tables, like, hi, ma'am, can I take your order? And she's like, man, you need to be a model. It's not always like that in Vegas. In Vegas, you know, I'm usually dancing at the club, and it's like, damn, baby, I want to put you on as a stripper, right, or sure. I want to put you on as a, you know, as a model. You know, you dancing real dope. Let me put you on as a model. Yeah. It's a different lane. That woman looked at me over across of a table, handed her food, and seen talent in me. The yeah. men, majority of them, look at them and see sex and see a symbol, and that's what they want. So it is a little bit different. It's deep. I always, <laughs> I kind of always wonder this, right? Because I always, I always notice, like, no matter how beautiful a woman was, they can always find something wrong with themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, 
a thousand guys, you can't walk in the store without a thousand guys trying to holler and try to get at you. But then you'll look in the mirror and be like, damn, this eyebrow is off a little bit. <laughs> Why do you think that women are so self-conscious? Do you think it's because it, the initial look from a lot of men is just as a possession or as sexual? Or do you think it's something embedded in you guys to feel that you have to be perfect? Um, to be honest, um, especially with women such as myself, I'm an Aquarius woman. I have a different type of Shout mother. out, I'm Aquarius. You know what I mean? Hey, yeah. come for tell real, me that. For real. So as an Aquarius, um, especially as an Aquarius woman, we're very strong, um, dominant women who believe in our independence, our beauty, and what the hell we're standing for, right? But everybody has a weakness, right? Yeah. Like everybody has a kryptonite, right? Everybody has. So there's only a couple of people, especially for an Aquarius like myself, there's only a select few, maybe one to three max. Mm -hmm. Aquariuses don't really let people fuck us up, but it's about oh, yeah. one to three max where their opinion genuinely matters. So let's say it's an Aquarius where, you know, such as myself. So I dated women forever. Um, I was dating a woman for 10 years. I broke up with her, and I started experiencing my man phase, right? And then Shout met. out to the man out there, man. Bring right. them home, fellas. <laughs> Bring them home, Bring them home, home fellas. <laughs> met a guy, uh, amazing guy, amazing spirit, and we connected in a lot of different ways. We were friends before we actually started dating. Yeah. And um, I had a lot of trust in this person, which is why mm -hmm. I kind of decided to, to get over, like, in that realm. But let's say this. I could give a fuck. I can give three fucks. Can I say fuck on the show? Yeah, you're good. You're I good. can give four fucks. Yeah, for real. That's <laughs> From what a, a man, like, nigga, if you see me in the street and maybe I'm not 100% put together and you've seen a couple of my photos and they was popping, but you see me with my sweats on and I got my slides real quick and a sweater, my lashes aren't on, my eyebrow fucked up. Like, if you see me. Looking like Rocky. Right. And you, could, you can dog me. I'm talking about put the shit online. Fake. None of that shit even fucking matters, mm. right? But there's a couple of people, let's say um, somebody that you love the most, where mm -hmm. it could be something super small. Um, you know what, babe? I've always like really, really, you know, I've always like really, really pretty pink lips. So a woman will take her time, not giving a fuck about the rest of the world, right? Mm -hmm. But those one to three people, because we only got three as an Aquarius, mm -hmm. will come through and say one particular thing that maybe that they like or maybe that they want to change. Mm -hmm. And that woman, who, again, that, that's trust in an Aquarius. That's trust and that's love. So you trust that, like, that opinion makes sense. Like, duh, my lips clearly got to get a little pinker. What the fuck? <laughs> right. They take it serious. Right. So they'll yeah. take that time. And then some women go extreme. They'll do the collagen. Facts. They'll, they'll, do, they'll do the surgeries. They'll do the extras. Uh, some women will take the time, do a little bit of lip scrub, do whatever they got to do. But that opinion from those couple of people to any woman in life actually matters. matters yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it, it makes a difference if they want to do things to their body, do things yeah. to their face, whatever. Well, speaking on the surgery... What's the pressure like being a woman when today, 2020, or well, about to be 2021, everyone is getting work done? Like, everyone, like, remember back in the day, like, you see a woman with some lips, like, a couple of injections in her lips, you're like, damn, what she do that for? <laughs> now it's like, if a woman don't have this, it's like a status quo now. So what kind of pressure do you think that brings on to our females, like, our women to be perfect like and no one's perfect but because you know the truth is this once they get their titties done damn i need a little bit off my stomach once they get their stomach done my ass can poke out a little bit more damn i need my calves to look right women it's gonna always be something so mm -hmm. what is that pressure being a woman do you feel the need not even just you women around you do you see them stressing about these things or do you see them like i'm gonna stick to my guns and i'm just gonna like, you hit the gym. I see you're a gym warrior. <laughs> so what do you, how does that affect you or the people around you? Well, um, my first thing is that that pressure comes from social media. I'm going to put it out there right now. Facts. Facts. Um, I actually did, um, I do a little bit of reading. Not too much. I need to do a lot more. But I was reading on basically social media and how it affects your life. Mm -hmm. So you you consistently see what 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 a perfect is considered to be. You'll see a Kim Kardashian. You'll see a Beyonce. You'll see a shout out to B. You'll see a um, yeah, shout B kind of bad. Right, all bad, please, yeah. everything. So you I heard she had bad breath though. So listen, I hope not though. I if the not. breath was bad, good, indifferent, B, I'm gonna keep it real, man. No matter how good she look, if the breath bad, I'm gonna have to. Um, you turn down. I'm Beyonce? gonna take off the next exit. So you gonna turn down Beyonce? 
it depends on the money too. It's, it's so it. many. It's so many options. It's, money, it's so many wallet. things into that. You know give me saying? a wallet. Can I bet some money on uh, this? Man, listen. If her breath stinks and she don't got money, B is getting walked past, baby girl. B has money and her breath don't stink. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I heard. <laughs> no. But no, I, I take it from social media because, um, to be honest, it's like when I was thinking about it outside of the box, right? So inside of the box, you're thinking about individuals. Well, why would they do this and why would they do that? Outside of the box, this social platform, if it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Where the fuck would you be? Right. You see what I'm saying? If it wasn't there, because back in the day, they had no cell phones. They was out growing their food, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Planting, growing, dealing right. with their families. They were happy on a day-to-day -day basis, happy. getting up in the morning, walking the dog, kicking it, kicking it with their families, making babies, doing their thing without seeing how the rest of the world was, how they lived, and if that made a difference in their life. So social media... When you pressure. see others, how they live in, what they do, and it pressures you, as a mm -hmm. woman especially, to step your fucking game up. And not step it up in every way, but sometimes you actually, some women take depression off of, damn, she has this and has that. Mind you, social media, the glass is only half full, half love. Full. The bitch that has 60,000 followers on social media is in the house on an air mattress, baby. Sad as it's, hell. It's, and not all of them, but the majority of them. Right. Because I spent my time and my money building my social platform versus building my life, my mind, my body, and my spirit. And it's, it's different, so... It's like, first of all, it's half full. But second of all, the half full shit that you're looking at, you try to live up to that standard. Mm -hmm. Like you try to live, so you try to live up to it, but just be like, damn, she has something, something, something amount of followers. This nigga, that nigga, my nigga probably looking at her. I need to look like that. Yeah, for real. For real. But your dude don't even look at her that night. Because once, That's I'm going to keep it right. When it comes to men, like, after they, um, after they release, we're going to say release, keep it PG-13. After you release <laughs> reality hit. <laughs> Like, it'd be like, what the fuck am I doing to bed with her? <laughs> Damn, my girl at home. It wasn't worth it. The way home, yeah. the way there be exciting. The way home, it'd be you as a man. Yeah. You question yourself, like, what the fuck, man? Like, she wasn't worth it, man. I went over there, man. It was dog poop everywhere. Like, I know yeah. the ass was looking good in them shorts, but <laughs> I can do better. You know what I mean? So, True. it'd be like that once after that. After you fulfill yourself, you'd be like, what the fuck was I on? Man. You know what I mean? I, as a woman, especially maybe that a woman that I, I like, my dude know, like, I, I love a bad bitch, right? Yeah. So, it's like, I'm not gonna, there's not, that whole, like, not having it together doesn't attract me as a woman. Yeah. Because I expect a man to be grungy. Right, mm -hmm. I expect him to have his little grunge going. Maybe he's not 100% perfect, but he's still kind of tidy. Yeah. His hands are rough. His feet maybe might be a little rough. His, he might be a little rough around the edges, but that's what I expect out of my man. Out of my woman, I expect her to have this shit together a little bit. A little tidy over here a little bit. Smelling good, looking good, touched up, shaved, clean, <laughs> nice feet. Like regular shit. So, I mean, I can understand that being pressure. Because you end up doing something for the pussy, and then you think back at it like that was not yeah, worth it. For real, and it's crazy because I had a conversation with, with uh, your cousin Fuji. Actually, yeah. I had a conversation with him. We was leaving out of Boulder Station, right? And uh, we seen this girl walking out, and she had a nice butt, but then when she turned around, she had hella belly. You feel me? Sheesh. And he was like, "Damn!" I was like, "Oh no, nah, she got too much belly." He was like, "Nigga, you got belly." I said, "Nigga, you bald headed. Do you like bald headed girls?" You know what I'm saying? Because just because I got a little belly don't mean I want my woman to be you know, looking right. five months pregnant. Right. So it just, it's contradicting, but, you know, it's life, I guess, man. But um, as far as, like, acting and modeling, who's your inspirations? Like, who? Uh, you know what? I'm about to piss a few people off. So um, modeling, actually, there's there's two people. So one of them, um, her Instagram name is only world, or Ugly Worldwide. Pardon mm -hmm. me. Um, Ugly Worldwide, she's actually this girl, because I'm kind of intrigued by, by some different things. So she used to do um, more so like retro, gothic-y, demonic ass, like some shit that I wasn't into, but the model was so cold, I still was interested in looking at it. Okay. It was like some shit where I was like, why is she doing this, but she's so cold? So I continued to follow her, right? Okay. Um, she ended up getting signed to Fendi Models, mm. end up, up kind of like changing her vibe. And she's a kick, she's kick ass. Like, um, so she was one of my models. She's a black and white model. And then um, there's another model. What do you mean model. when you say black and white? Her race? Or are you talking about her race? Okay, okay. Right, her race. She's uh, she's African American and Caucasian. Mm. 
Okay. Let me be politically correct. <laughs> yeah. um, she's African American and Caucasian, but it does make a difference because you know you got to think about different looks, Facts. right? So there's there's that there's that African model, beautiful African look, gorgeous as hell. Mm. There's that Hispanic model, maybe yes. that Hispanic and black model, curly hair, super good looking. Um, Caucasian, African American, they have like those different tones. They have those full lips, but still have that different nose. Like so, it does it does tend to make a difference sometimes. Facts. Um, Facts. Just being correct in regards to fashion, nothing in regards to anything negative. Yeah. But um, there's another young lady where, and, and I feel like when I think about both of them, Ugly Worldwide, she kind of, she gives me like a Cherie vibe. I, my name is Jaleesa Cherie, mm -hmm. right? Cherie is my middle name. So Ugly Worldwide gives me like, I will say she gives me like a Jaleesa vibe. Let me say that. Mm -hmm. She gives me like a Jaleesa vibe where she, where when she actually dresses up and she does her like Maryland's and she does her sexy, she's like warm, right? And it's this young lady named P. Wood. P. Wood? Um, Slick Wood. Sorry, P. Wood is somebody that she, she actually is friends with that I've been like looking at online, but I'm okay. super inspired by these people. Um, Slick Woods is the actual model. Okay. And um, she's, uh, believe she's all African American. Okay. Um, a different looking type of model. So she has a more full mouth, huge gap, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Straight grills, lips big, bald head. And I wore an Amber Rose look for a while. What kind and of ball are you talking about? Short hair or just Michael Jordan? Super, super short, almost Michael Jordan. Like the oh, one. Shit. Is that bitch called a one? Yeah, Where I guess called a one, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like it's a ski taste, like it's a little fuzz on it. So, um, you gotta be, I always feel like women, excuse me, I always feel like women who cut their hair, you got to be a brave woman. I cut I, it. I have an auntie named Curly, man. She's probably like the mo one of the most beautiful people I've ever seen with short hair. But you, that's really only your shit. When you cut your, if you a woman, not Michael Jordan. I don't, I'm gonna keep it. I don't want a woman to look like MJ. <laughs> but as far as like the little buzz cut, kind of little short shit, waves and shit, I think that's pretty dope though. I actually had it. Um, it was blonde. It was waved out, and it was like that for a while. But I was in a super gay phase, so that kind of like makes sense. Yeah. You know? <laughs> when we see women with short hair, we kind of be like, yeah, she's probably black. For that. real. I was like working out every day, six days a week, bald ass head, every week <laughs> that came through. <laughs> <She> already... <laughs> for real. It was a different place. Yeah. As far, what about as far as acting? Um, acting, ooh. I'm about to upset somebody. So listen, so. Don't say Christina and Miliana, nobody, please. I'm not. Oh, listen to me. Act. Somebody recently surprised me, and I was like, she's fucking killing it. So I just seen this movie with Kiki Palmer. Oh, Kiki, man, she's so talented. Sing, dance, sing, dance, and do everything. Kiki's really, I like Kiki. Yes, I just seen this movie with Kiki Palmer. And it wasn't what they were doing. It's not because I used to like girls or nothing like that. Or I still, <laughs> whatever, long story. But it was like, she switched it up so much. It inspired me so much. Like, for me as a person, I could never put on some different type of roles, right? Like when you are in some different stages in your life, there's some different type of roles that you play. Yeah. And she played this role so well. I was like, what do you say? That boy good. Have to respect that. That, that boy good. <laughs> that right. Boy. Like I was like, well, yeah. like she was like, she was crazy. So she really inspired me to be a cool person. I see her on TikTok. You know what I mean? Um, consistently. You know what I mean? She has her friends. She has a regular life, her family. Super cool. Um, but when I seen a few of her acting roles, she taps in like you can see that she taps in and that is what interests me the most like yeah. if you're gonna fucking do it be a thousand at it be you're great right. at it absolutely right and when it comes i always felt like as far as with acting man i always wonder like how do people remember their lines you know what i mean so how do you feel about that like did you when you first started was you nervous about that perspective like damn how am i remember all this or was it like are you someone who always caught on things pretty fast to be honest didn't catch on nothing pretty fast at all. The first couple times where like, because my show was more, um, I kind of, of course I helped produce the show. I put the show together, but be because it was more of like a talk show where we covered actual current events, there was no time to make up lines that we're current, we're covering shit that's happening right, right now. now. Yeah. There's no time for us to talk about this 30 minutes later and then pre <laughs> So then the one or two times where I had to kind of go over something that maybe the producer wanted me to go over, because I was so used to covering current and talking off rip like we are right now, it was like, oh, oh, oh. Cut. <laughs> can I can I get a drink, please? Some water. So it was. Yeah. It was a little bit different. Um, I 
I really will say I wasn't that good at it at the time. Yeah. Now, when it comes down to, you know, digging into a role, great paid role, and yeah. my job is to remember that shit, I'm going to remember You're going to get it right. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's dope, man. I always wondered about things like that, especially with a whole movie. You know what I mean? Be like, damn, how could they remember every role? Because you got to kind of know your role and the next person's um, yeah. words. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that has to be challenging. All right, so, like, what do you got going on right now? Where do you guys want me to start? So, um, let's tap in. Can you see me right here? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, we're going to tap into this. So, I'm actually, um, we just recently filmed season one of our talk show. It's called Lip Talk with Lisa. Okay. So, it's a fun and sexy talk show. Um, can't talk about too much. Again, we cover uh, current events in a sexy and erotic environment. So um, there's some dope things on the show. There's some dope things on the show. We have an amazing panel, mm -hmm. um, sexy ladies. We have like a bottle, a bottle girl style girl mm -hmm. called like a wild and out style girl. Okay. She's on the show. Um, we talked about any and everything that really that really is touching the scene right now. Okay. What is this being released on? Um, so our date again, we kind of talked about it a little bit um, the date in regards to when we're going to release it We were going to release it in February, but we're going to push it out a bit because we had some big things happen um, So we want to take the time market it correctly and then push it out awesome So we may I want to say no later than April of 2021 um, but I don't have an exact date, but I will right. catch y'all up with one. As far as what platform, though? What platform is it going to be on? So uh, we want to pitch it, of course, to either Netflix or uh, Amazon TV. Okay. But we're going to also have our own private website. So Lip Talk with Lisa is going to have its own website where you can log on, um, subscribe, and then be able to go ahead and check out Lip Talk with Lisa. Um, and then kind of check out some highlights, check out some things about the show. And then, you know, we're going to give you some sneak peek things about season two. Okay. That's what's up. And also, you also said you have locks. You, you have a... Serum for dreads and stuff. Definitely. So, um, how did you come across that? Oh, let me tell you guys. Locks by Lisa. Listen, no. So what happened is, um, when you are actually starting your locks, this guy, he's been through it, I'm sure, right? Yeah. When you're starting your locks, you're in a place where you pissed. Oh. You pissed. You embarrassed. I didn't want to step outside without a hat. <sighs> it was depressing. It's a thing because the thing about locks, the reason why I got mine is because I was in this place where I was not pretty without a lace front on. You hear me? I was not to pretty you, without a lace or front. Just, you just, or you just didn't feel Just pretty. to me, as okay. a woman. You know how you kind of talk to us about, like, why do women do these things? Because I feel like some things are very, are, they're very much so influencer. Mm -hmm. Right now, like, you, you got to have a little some some here, a little some some there. So, and shout out, because, honey, my, I got a homegirl right now. She will lay your shit. So, call me, let me know when you need it. <laughs> At Jaleesa Sheree, follow me. Okay. But, um... Yeah, like, so I wasn't comfortable with that one. I was gluing on my hair every single day where you can see in my locks right now yeah. where I was like, man, if I kept putting that glue on there, I might have been in a bad spot. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I was gluing on my wigs every single day. I was working out at the gym, leaving the gym, coming home, going on the wig, going to the office, getting back, going to a photo shoot, getting back, yeah. coming home, taking care of the dogs. Then had to rip the wig off to put it on the next day while I shower. It was crazy. Damn. So um, I got locks because uh, I started it. And my homegirl had recently got locks, and she was like, you know what? It's a hard spot right now. She was like, but I'm starting to feel beautiful. And she was like, it feels so free. Okay. That's the one thing she told Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first started mine, I had braids at first. And, you know, once you get your hair braided, you don't want to get water on it. You don't want to get it wet. Mm -hmm. With my dreads, you hop in the shower. It is what it is, you know, especially after it locked. You know, right. you don't really care. And it's free. And I always tell people, like, dreads are for us. Mm -hmm. Like, people always ask me, like, do you get real hot? Nah, for some reason my dress keep my head cool. Man, I'm telling you. I don't be feeling like, oh damn, I'm hella hot. Like you will see, like when I used to wear my hair like flat iron and stuff, mm -hmm. it felt like my head was hot. Yeah. But something about dress is just keep my shit cool. So, so how did you end up coming up with the serum though? Well, because when I developed my own locks um, and I actually got them locked up, I was in this ugly phase and I had to figure out a way to be able to get them super neat all the time. So I was in this super ugly phase. I was at that short point where I was trying to, you know, get in get in touch with my face, get in touch with my body, get in touch with my inner beauty. And and when your locks, when you first start them, you get this mini fro under this joint. Man. And then you got the baby lock, so it don't really know what it wants to do. It doesn't know if it wanted to fro or lock. So it was a lot. So I ended up um, developing this serum where I was like, I need something that's going to stick. Keep that shit stuck. Right. Yeah. I need something that's going to stick because as long as it looks neat, I can figure something out. Yeah. 
Right, I could t- pick tail it, eyebrows, lashes, we could figure it out, you know, spice girl that shit, but just as long as it looks neat. So I developed a serum where it was all natural and organic products. Uh-huh. Um, everything is edible in my serum. You can actually, you know what I mean, consume anything in my products. Um, oh, it's yeah. made to order. And uh, what it does, especially for starter locks, um, because right now times are changing, you guys better tap in. It's different right now. So when you're mm-hmm. starting your locks and even when you have your locks for a long time, some people are really interested in keeping them neat. I work out. So if you can sweat in your head and still keep your locks Man, neat, yeah, it's girl. a crazy thing. I work out consistently. So um, what we did was we, well, I developed this product. Um, I tested it out. Um, tested out, you know what I mean, like expiration dates. Um, mm-hmm. Had a couple of friends tap in, kind of connect me with a few people, let me know about my ingredients, what I'm able to make, so what I'm able to not make, so what I'm able to market, what I'm able to sell. And then we came up with this amazing product. Um, it's actually, uh, you're going to be giving us six months. We're going to be releasing it, but it's going to be Locks by Lisa. That's me on the front with my little glasses. I actually wear glasses. My lashes are just too it's long. It's like an Egyptian picture. Right. Love it. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. My designer, Chucky, kind of came up with it. But, um, yeah, it's going to be all natural and organic. Great for starter locks. It also is the lock serum with the leave-in conditioner spray. We're going to have to get some for some people I hang around really don't care about their hair being neat. I ain't saying no names, but skinny. <laughs> That nigga do not care, man. I'm gonna have to kick him off the show about some shit. We will talk about that. Locks are, as long as them locks are dripping, he got us it really like don't Jamaica. matter. If they dripping, it doesn't matter. As long I as know. you can check the drip. That's like, when you get lazy. Check the drip. Yeah, his shit long, but they don't never be they don't be neat that much though. You know? I mean, my That's, sister, she's uh, in Florida right now. She does this whole like natural thing too. Um, all things raw. You guys check her out. But all uh, my things sister raw? Tawana. Yeah, all things raw. Well, since we... Oh, yeah. Go ahead and shout out your... Um, let them know how to reach you. Instagram, Facebook, um, Snapchat, and let them know how to come get your product and all that. Yeah. You know? So, right now, you guys, we are located on All Things Raw with the uh, Lock product. So, with Locks by Lisa, allthingsraw.com is going to be able to kind of have me. You can go on there, tap in, order your lock serum, order your leave-in conditioner. Um, all of that's available. Um, there's going to have different smells on there, so it's going to be like a lemongrass smell, lavender smell. You guys let me know what you're interested in. Um, in regards to Lip Talk with Lisa, Lip Talk with Lisa is going to be on our personal website. I'll actually be able to update you with that shortly. Um... You guys check out my Instagram. It's going to be at Jalisa, J-A-L-I-S-A, Cherie, S-H-E-R-E-E. So we'll have a plug for the hair care product, a okay. plug for the show for Lip Talk with Lisa. So you guys will be able to click the link in the bio and come check it out. For sure. It's and working. then a Snapchat is at Jalisa Cherie also. Yeah, you working, man. And um, I also know your brother, Johnny. You know, he's one of them evil geniuses, you know. So do you feel like... What do you like? You have a lot of shit going on. I even noticed in here, y'all got all kind of paintings and everything. So y'all seem real articulate. And do you think it's in your bloodline? Yeah, crazy. Um, we got a grandfather that's amazing, and uh, I know it's in the bloodline. Um, shout out to Johnny G, my brother. Mm. I'm gonna be honest. I love uh, music, and it really has me tap in. He's one of my favorite artists. I would yeah. like. You know, some people where you like, man, if I could just be Jay Z, nigga, you would be. You know what I mean? <laughs> like that yeah. guy is crazy. Like um, to where when I when I do catch a cool meal, I'm gonna put an easy hundred thousand behind a couple of a couple of different artists, and he's okay. one of them. Yeah. Uh, he's a he's an amazing guy. I know the talent runs in the bloodline. Um, yeah. The ambition runs in the bloodline. Nice. The culture runs in the bloodline. When I got my locks, he was so like, bro, you beautiful, dude. Mm. He never came at me like that neither. He always talks like shit. He's my big brother, right? Mm-hmm. So he always has something negative to say. Yeah. He uh, hit me up. When after I got the locks, I sent him a picture. He was like, you beautiful, dude. It was the first time he told me. I think I was like in my 20s. Oh, damn, that's you tough. You feel me? <laughs> that's tough, but yeah. You he know. meant it, though. I wasn't yeah. mad. For real, for real. He likes the natural. It made me happy. That's dope, man. Yeah, Johnny's a very talented person, man. Um, I kicked it with him a couple of times. You know, I'm all, well, I'm always around Johnny. And I just realized, like, he thinks on another level. Always. You know, if you don't, if you kind of, like, not advanced, he'll probably seem offsetting to you. Yeah, because the tap in, like, when you're tapping into this different type of, like, spirituality, I feel like, because when you're thinking on that different level, you're not, you're not on the same page as an average. Right. And the level of thinking is so, like, you'd be like, well, how did you get there? I was already there. Like, I, he, he doesn't take steps to his levels of thinking. It's like, he's here, mm-hmm. so then everybody else basically has to catch up. So you can see, mm-hmm. like, the progression in the average black man's mind versus I, his. Absolutely. He's amazing. Well, what's your nationality? 
Y'all know. Man, I'm look. So my dad is from New Orleans, right? He's Creole. But my grandma was very light skinned. She looked Caucasian to me. I couldn't she call it. Caucasian to me. Now, <laughs> his dad, my great grandfather, apparently was. He to my dad, he looked very much so Caucasian. We're gonna have to do ancestry and find this shit out. <laughs> I was about to say that. Right, but my grandma was super, super light skinned Creole. I'm sure it has black in it, but I know it has a mix of white in it. Like I know they was, I know they was messing around, yeah. and then they had them Frenchmen and them African Americans. They was doing their thing. Yeah, was then they came over too. here to right. Yeah, was raping shit all day. Then they came over here, boom, bam. So my dad is like me, but you know the skin is so bright that when you touch it, it turns red. My mom is super chocolate. I came out like this caramel mocha joint. It was Real quick. <laughs> that was a little extreme. Amen, hey all day. It's, Gosh, damn. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. So where's your love for music come? Um, I think I fell in love with music. Funny, my partner just bought me um, another violin. I used to be a violinist when I was oh, younger. Damn. But I fell in love with music when, um, let me just not even play. So I fell in love with music by following my big brother. Okay. Um, my big brother used to wear K-Swiss. I bought K-Swiss. That's right up. He used to wear all black. At one point, I was like Tom Wigilis in mm-hmm. elementary school wearing all black, right? So he started getting into, you know, different type of... He actually was listening to rock music for a little bit. I don't yeah. know if Johnny going to put y'all on to that. Yeah. But that boy was on some, like, white boy rock for a minute. And then he uh, started getting into more, like, you know, hip-hop, R&B, stuff like that. And uh, him and his friend... They used to talk about being millionaires all the time, and that's when I really started getting into the hip hop music. That boy, he was so amazing. Absolutely, man, that's dope. And uh, yeah, so I definitely got into rap, basically following him, and started really listening to what I liked and what tapped in and what fit for me. So if I was able to connect with that song or connect with that time or connect with that space, then that's kind of how I feel about music. Like, um. When I think about certain times in my life, I can kind of relate it to a song. Mm-hmm. I can be like, oh, yeah, I remember this was on when I was in high school, or this was on when I was in junior high school. I remember the first, like, verse, I knew the whole thing, too, like, Jay-Z, Can I Get It? When I first <laughs> learned that whole verse, I just knew I was about to take over the world, you know right. what I mean? But, yeah, that's dope. And I feel like as far as with our people, we connect a lot of things to music, you know? Yeah. Pain, happiness, you know, road trips. It's always music going around, especially with our parents. You come home and you hear your mom playing a certain song, you know she's cleaning up. Mm. You hear her playing a certain song, you're like, oh, mom's mad at pops. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that shit's wild, man. But um, as far as, like, with the acting thing, right, what would be your dream role? You know what? I don't think it's going to be a dream role. Like, if they let me, if they can just give me what, what would be my dream is if I get this crazy budget, billion dollars. They put billion, listen, I'm, I'm sure you, you tapped in. They put yeah. billions behind these productions. Facts. Don't think they don't. They these don't. these fast and furious ass, all this crazy shit going on, they put billions and billions and billions of dollars behind these productions. You give me about two, three billion and let me come up with some dope ass reality kick ass show or some like, or some dope extension of like, Lip talk with Lisa where we're going to like state to state covering mm-hmm. all the like secret sexy things in the state because I was thinking about that. There's a swingers club on some weird shit in every <laughs> single state, I swear. Yeah. So Lip Talk with Lisa covers like current events in a sexy environment, right? So if we had a huge budget, a couple billion, we can go state to state, check out different swingers events, talk to different people, talk to to crazy people with whatever the fuck foot fetishes, <laughs> toe fetishes, ear fetishes, because that's what it is. Like, sex sales, yes, that's a thing. But when you can tap into sex and then still keep them comfortable yeah. to where it is in a, in a like current event type of situation, sexy environment, if we can tap into that, it'll be amazing. So my dream would be is to have a huge budget, go from state to state, party bus that shit where, like, you're recording everything that the cast is doing on the bus, <laughs> all kind of crazy shit going on, people messing around in the back, yeah. two girls in the front driving with the driver. We get to the state, they pop out, different kind of restaurants, different swingers <laughs> clubs, whatever. We pop out, we get to know some fun people that maybe own the club and why they did it. You know what yeah. I mean? That That's one of my dreams. That's what's up, man. When it comes down to TV. That's dope, man. As far as modeling, have you did any modeling, modeling gigs lately or have you just been focused on the lip? lip? Um... To be honest, I'm always doing modeling gigs. I just recently did a video for the uh, Real Copyright. Um, after that, I did another video for um, Rio DreamWorks. Okay. And... Uh, 
with modeling, um, I don't know. I, I just felt like it, it's only so much I can kind of do when it comes to that without me wanting to progress to a higher place. Yeah. So it's like I, I've, I've did a few publications. Like my first magazine I think I did. Well, my first published magazine was in 2016. Um, I did uh, White Teeth, Black Lungs with Willow Wren. She was amazing. Okay. And um, – I just recently did a publication out here. I did a couple more in Los Angeles, like uh, B&G, like Bride and Groom. Yeah. And um, I did one recently out here. And to be honest, I love modeling, but mm. I need a whole bag. So mm. modeling, we're out here kind of putting a couple of things out. And some models, you know, the Kylie Jenners, the models that, have, that already have a platform, yeah. they can make millions off of their brand. Right now, I want to be able to have that platform and get to those few millions before I try to branch that off with my modeling and things like that. So I feel like some of us are doing a bit backwards. Yeah. We start at a little bit of a, a lower level versus starting at that higher level and then pushing your artistic stuff out that way with that with that base and that capital to be able to really get to where you want to be. Yeah. So right now, um, what's most important is the capital. Right. If it comes down to me doing modeling gigs where it's an amazing connection, I can get to know some great people or even, let's say we do it for my people. I step out get cleaned up, turn up, have a good time, model, act, anything for, for my people, like whatever we got to do for my people. Yeah. Um, but in regards to just kind of doing it, it's more so like we're doing it for what's going to make more sense to okay. whatever's going to put us on a be better platform or put us in a better space. But um, I really want to more so focus on the business that we're building because that's that's the one that pays me the most. <laughs> yeah, for real. It seemed like it would be kind of scary for a woman. Like, say you get a gig in modeling and acting, like say... In Jersey, right? You sh you show up out there by yourself expecting something, mm -hmm. but it can go wrong because nowadays people could like catfish your ass. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like you know, it just seems like that'd be kind of crazy for a woman, you know, to like go out of town chasing her dreams, knowing like that anything could happen in this crazy world. It is. I mean, but that's the whole thing again about having capital. When you have that corporate job or whatever you're doing to make sure that you're in that okay place, mm -hmm. you can have. 15 off to your side, 10 right. off to your side, 7 off to your side at that matter. Take your ass to Jersey. Protect. There's something that happened. Maybe it didn't work out. You got a weird feeling. You fucking call. You book yourself a flight. Mm -hmm. doesn't lead to the morning. You go pay for your little hotel room with your little bread that you have off stack to the side. You take yourself back home the next day. The thing about anything that you do is, is as long as you have capital, you can do it comfortably. Facts. doesn't matter if you walk down the street. You walk down the street with capital and some bread behind you. Yeah. You can walk comfortably at all times if you leave if you travel if you model if you act if as long as you do it without that being your last resort you're okay Thanks. so that's my thing mm. for all the ladies that are coming out that are doing whatever they're doing that was my whole thing especially when i travel have a bag because when you have things that are going on and oh somebody got me booked and they never showed up and they canceled yeah. at the last minute and you flew way out of town as long as you got your bread to get back and as long as you had a contingency plan ladies you're going to be okay Right. Be smart, follow your gut. For sure, man. Well, before we get up out of here, it's a little part I like to call, like, game for lames. Give me some game or some wisdom that someone gave you that changed your life forever as far as, like, got you on the right track or made you more motivated. Mm, game for lames. Yeah, like some game that, like, your grandfather, grandma, mom gave you some knowledge that just always stuck with you, you know? That's a good one, Gang for Lames. Um, let's see. I thought it was a pretty good one as well. Um, one, I mean, I just spoke it. Um, one thing, Gang for Lames, always have a contingency plan. Yeah. Um, that's a big one for me. Like, you always have a backup to your backup's backup. <laughs> for real. Straight up, because... Plan you know A, I mean? B, C, and D. And, you know, prior preparation, it prevents a piss-poor performance. So, before you went out there, if you talked to whom you need to talk to... You prepared prior. You got there. You got ready to execute it. Everything was together. You should have a smooth setting. If you didn't prepare prior, if you didn't talk to people, if you didn't connect, if you didn't do what you needed to do, it's not always going to pl going to kind of play out the way that you planned. Even if you planned it prior, yeah. it doesn't always pl play out the way that you planned. So keep a contingency plan. Yeah, man. I remember <laughs> um, Tia said something like that. He said, um, "Success is when preparation meets opportunity." Mm -hmm. You know, when you're when you're prepared for a situation, because a lot of people in a lot of industries. They be thinking they ready, but they're not really ready. You know what I mean? Man. Like, oh, I want to rap, rap, or whatever they want to do. But then, like, or you want to be a model, but you don't even have your portfolio ready. Right. You could run into Tyra right down now. the street, and you wouldn't even have nothing short but fucking nine Instagram pictures because 
you're not really committed there. You know what I mean? Right. That's so funny. For real, for real man. But um, thanks for coming out. It was a pleasure. Thanks for you know, having me. And we definitely gonna um, mix and mingle and you know scratch each other back as far as with this social media thing. For sure. But um, thanks. Hey Amen. It's my pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. Again, you guys check me out. Follow me at Jaleesa Sheree. Okay, that's going to be on my Instagram, Jaleesa Sheree. That's the best place to tap in with me. You guys check nice out Live Talk out. with Lisa and our locks by Lisa, which is the hair care product. Thank you so much. Absolutely, man. Probably talk about too. This is the wrap up. Y'all have a blessed day. I go hard for this. How the fuck you winning if you lost to this? Niggas think they own so they get off to this. It's easy to get cross to this. Con, 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 T.O.P., we gon' get far from this. Step up in they town and burn it down like I'm a horse.